For this first problem, you need to line up the decimals and then fill the numbers in. And after you just add like normal, bring the decimal point straight down. So on the second question, it's the same thing. Line up the decimals. And just add like normal. If you're a little confused about this, you can put zeros behind any number after a decimal point. Then bring the decimal point straight down. For question three, same thing. Just line up the decimal points. I'll use the one that's already up there. Subtract like normal and bring the decimal point straight down. On this one, you need to double borrow. So I can't, two doesn't go in, I can't subtract five from two, so I need to borrow, but I don't have any number at the zero. I don't have any number at the other zero, so I'm gonna to have to borrow around. So I borrow from that three, that makes it 10, but I also have to borrow from that 10, and that makes this 10. And then I borrow from that one, that makes it a nine, and I have 12. So seven, nine minus zero is zero. Nine minus two is seven, and then this is two, and then the decimal point straight down. For the fourth question, not lining up the decimals, that's what I'm not worried about. You are just multiplying, so you multiply like normal. And then you count the number of numbers to the right of the decimal in the question. So on this one, there's one number to the right of the decimal. That means I have to have one number to the right of the decimal in the answer. And it goes right there. Same setup for question five. You would take 4.31 and multiply it by 0.9. Just multiply like normal. Count the number of numbers to the right of the decimal in the question up above, both, both of them. There's three of them. And then you need to have three numbers to the right of the decimal in the answer. For this page, do either each question by itself and then check the answers in the video or um, do them one uh, or you can get them all done and then check the video after. So 0 0.62 times 0 0.05, multiply like normal. Count the number of numbers to the right of the decimal. In the top, there are four of them. You need to find four numbers to the right of the decimal in the bottom. There's not enough, so I need to add a zero so I get enough to do it. So my answer is 0 0.0310. For number seven, you're just taking 12 times 0 0.02. Multiply it like normal. Count the number of numbers to the right of the decimal. Up above, there's two. And then you have to have two numbers to the right of the decimal in the bottom. Number eight for division is pretty straightforward. You just ask yourself, five goes into two how many times? It doesn't go into any time. Some people write zero, some people don't. Either way is fine. Five goes into 24 four times. Four times five is 20. You subtract them, you get four. Bringing down this zero, how many times does five go into 40? It goes into eight times, so this answer is 48. Number nine is a little more complicated, but still not much more difficult. There's a decimal point at the end of all whole numbers, the decimal point at the end. We usually don't put it in. I put it in there just to help us a little bit. You ask yourself, how many times does five go into five? It goes one full time. And bring the three down. Five goes into three, it doesn't go into full time, so we have to put a zero there. That means bring down the other three. Five goes into 33 six times, and that's 30. 
at this point, we're not done because um, we're not at zero at the bottom. You would put a remainder three if we were doing that, but we don't do that anymore. We just use that decimal point, and beyond a decimal point, we can put as many zeros as we want. So I put a zero there and bring it down. Five goes into 30 six times. Six times five is 30, and then we're done. At that point, you bring the decimal point straight up, 106.6. .6. For question 10, question 10 is very similar to question 9. Just divide like normal. How you ask yourself, how many times does 4 go into 9? It goes in two full times. 2 times 4 is 8. You subtract it, bring the 9 down, 19. 4 goes into 19 four times. And 4 times 4 is 16. You subtract those and you get 3. Now, because of decimal points there, we can add as many zeros as we want. So we put a 0 in. We have 30. 4 goes into 30 7 full times, which is 28. And subtract those, we have 2. We can add another 0. Bring it straight down. And 4 goes into 20 five times. After you've on the division, <clears throat> you just bring the decimal point straight up. It's 24.75. Number 11 is, again, a similar problem. 2 does not go into 1. You can either skip it or put a 0 in there. 2 goes into 13. It goes in 6 times. And 6 times 2 is 12. Subtract those, I get 1. I have to put a decimal in. I can add zeros after that decimal. And 2 goes into 10 five times, so it's 6.5. The third page is new stuff, so follow along and do it as I do it, or you can give it a try yourself if you want to, and then just check back with the video. You'll notice in number 12, it's a little bit different because it's 1.2 divided by 0.3, so now we have a decimal on the outside. What you need in these cases is to always make the outside into a whole number by moving the decimal point. So I would move the decimal point one space over, it's kind of like multiplying it by 10. But if I, whatever I do to the outside, I have to do the exact same thing to the inside. So if I move the decimal one space over on the outside, I have to do it on the inside. And that's where the decimal point will be. We're not worried about this decimal point, it's changed. We're not worried about this one, it's changed. Then you just divide like normal, and just like we did in the last page. So three does not go into one, but 3 goes into 12 four times, and that's 12, 0. Made these simple on purpose so that we can practice moving those decimals. Same thing on this one. We're moving the decimal point from 0.5 over one space, so it gets 5 on the outside. So we have to do whatever we do on the outside. We have to do the same thing on the inside, and we move that decimal place over one space. We divide like normal, so 5 goes into 21, because this doesn't mean much to us anymore, and that doesn't either. So 5 goes into 21 four times. It's 20. We do subtraction, bring the 5 down. 5 goes into 15 three times. Now we have the decimal point there. Decimal point goes straight up from where we changed it. So 43 with the decimal point in there is just the same as 43. This problem is the same as the last one. You would slide the decimal over one space. Since there's not a decimal behind any whole number, the decimal is at the end of that number. We just put it in, slide it over once, but since there's not anything there, you have to put a zero in. Then you just divide like normal. 
Two goes into three one time. Two, one left. Bring down the three. Now we're at 13. Two goes into 13. Six times. Six times two is 12. I subtract them. I get one. I bring the 10 down. Two goes into 10. Five times. It's 10. And then I'm done. It would bring the decimal point straight up, and it's 165. Number 16 is also a little bit different. This time there's two numbers behind the decimal point on the outside and one number on the inside. We need to make that 0.12 into a whole number. We're going to make it 12. So we're going to slide the decimal point over two spaces. I'm not worrying about that one anymore. But then the inside one has to slide over two spaces. And there is not a number there, so we just add a zero in. Then we just divide, divide like normal. And this is a little trickier when there's two numbers on the outside. But 12 goes into 2, it doesn't, but it goes into 24 two times. 2 times 12 is 24. 0, bring the 0 down, we're set. So um, now the decimal point is not where it was before. It's down over here and we have to bring that decimal point straight up. But there's a problem. There's a space between the two and the decimal point. It's just a zero. So that answer is 20. This is like a previous problem. Just move that decimal point space one over to make it so it's a whole number 12. Do the same thing on the inside. So anything you do to the outside, you have to do to the inside. And then 12 goes into three. It doesn't, but it goes into 36 three times. Made these answers pretty easy. 3 times 12 is 36, it's 0, bring the decimal point straight up, and my answer is 3.